My name is Brad Rowe. I'm an IFBB professional. We're out here at Gold's Gym Venice. It is 5 a.m. Uh, I'm about to hit a back workout. Uh, we get a lot of bent over work, uh, deadlifts, so it's gonna be a pretty brutal workout. I like to train back early in the morning because there's no one in here. All right, so we're gonna start this workout. I gotta do some banded dumbbell pullovers. Uh, so we're gonna go over here, try to figure out this little setup. It's my first time trying to use the band, so let's see if we can get this going. And then the next exercise is gonna be here. I already set it up because it's kind of a bitch to get to equipment and everything. So I pre-plan ahead and get everything set up so we can just rock and roll once we get going. Um, so a little background about me. Last year was uh, technically my rookie year on the pro circuit. Uh, I killed myself, did eight shows, ended up qualifying for the Olympia. Got to step on stage at Olympia last year. Got my ass handed to me, but it was a hell of an experience. Uh, so this year, I'm kind of taking some time. I want to grow. I'll probably shoot for something in October, maybe the Frigno, post Olympia. And uh, I want to be competitive. You know, I don't want to step on stage and just hope that no one shows up in order for me to place top three. I want to be able to compete against pretty much anybody outside the top eight at the Olympia and, you know, be competitive and, and be fighting for a win against those quality guys. So. Uh, for the first time in my career, I'm actually taking a nice long off season, listening to my coach and uh, doing things slowly but surely, as they say. All right, so let's go try to set up these banded dumbbells. driving my arms back a little bit and I'm coming up lifting my chest off the pad what I'm trying to focus on is getting that lower portion of my lats really thicken up down there I think as little kids we watch wrestling things like that so you see these you know the Hulk Hogan's and the Macho Man Randy Savages and my favorite was the Ultimate Warrior you know these massive guys that were athletic flying around and I think that's what kind of got me first interested in building a great physique you know that and looking at uh, like Greek and Roman sculptures and things like that. You know, I was just, as a kid, I was enamored with the human body. And uh, that kind of carried on throughout most of my life. You know, I ended up becoming a biology major in college. Went on to get my master's in biology because I was so obsessed with the human body. Not only what you can do with it, or what you can create with it, but how resilient it is. You know, how the body functions. It's, it's I mean, we're amazing organisms. You know, and most people don't appreciate how much and what the body does and, and actually how tough and resilient it is if you feed it properly, if you take care of it, you know? So that's, uh, that's kind of what got me started with the gym and everything. I wanted to be, you know, the next Hulk Hogan, but the Lord didn't bless me with uh, four inches of height, I guess. <laughs> a little too short to be doing that shit. But my wife, she got uh, invited to WWE camp. She's gonna yell at me for saying this. So she might be going away on, uh, in August to uh, her training camp, three-day camp. And if they find that she's coachable, she'll go away for the four-month training camp with Divas. So she's got that, and hopefully she'll be getting her pro card in June at uh, Junior Nationals. So it could be a really exciting year for her and for me. So it'll be interesting. She can live up my childhood dreams. <laughs> All right, here we go. Set number two.
be in bed for a couple hours. Uh, so I just got one more exercise left. Luckily, it's an easy one. Just some uh, double D handle face pull downs. Kind of hit upper back rhomboid trap area. Once I catch my breath, I'll unrack these. Some people ask how I'm staying so lean this off season. That's why, because that's how my training is. Like yesterday after squats, and I talked about doing the, the two straight all out working sets and then a double drop set on squats. And then the next exercise was six by eight on leg press. So it's the same f fashion here of doing uh, eight reps, 15 second break, eight reps, 15 second break, six times. You know, you don't need a lot of weight on the sled to be burnt out at the end. And sometimes when you're trying to do sets like that, you put on a weight that you get six or eight reps, like it's nothing. And after your first two rounds, three rounds, you're like, fuck, I should have gone heavier. And all of a sudden that fourth and fifth round comes by and you're not even hitting your rep numbers. You're like, all right. All right, we're gonna move to the back room, do this last exercise. bars I used to party at all the time when I was younger had a fake ID and everything was uh, this biker bar back home in New Hampshire and uh, turns out I ended up becoming uh, really good friends with the owner eventually over time younger kid so I used to go there and party all the time during the summer and they had all like cover bands playing Nickelback and Drowning Pool and shit like that so it's kind of some of my favorite music to work out to I listen to either that or uh, some rap you know, some hardcore hip hop, things like that. But my music's pretty diverse. I like EDM. My wife got me into that. She's a big like EDM raver. Uh, she can go to like the EDC raves and not drink, not touch any drugs or anything like that, and just dance all night. That's just the kind of personality she is. So she turned me on to that music. And obviously everybody likes hip hop and rap. You know, I even listen to country, love country music when I'm just chilling, cruising around in the car, going on road trips. So I listen to it all, but when I train, it's either usually hip hop. Uh, since Straight Outta Compton came out, I've been listening to NWA radio on Pandora a lot. Reminds me of my childhood. And that Five Finger Death Punch radio on Pandora is good. Got a lot, of, a lot of hardcore rock and roll. All right, set number two. Another little funny story. Uh, me and my wife, we actually met here at the gym. Uh, when I first moved out here, she had just gotten here, she was training. Like I said, she wasn't into competing, she was just a gym rat. And there was just something about her, her drive. She trained so intense and pushed herself so hard. And so I had a crush on her. But I'm one of those people, you don't share what you eat. You don't date someone in the gym. You don't date someone that you go to class with. Because if anything bad goes wrong, then you're stuck dealing with that for eternity. So one day, I was a couple weeks out from Nationals in 2011, and uh, I was doing calf raises over there, and she came over and started talking to me. And uh, we kind of hit it off, we started chatting on Facebook, and uh, our first like five or six dates were meeting here at 5 a.m. to do cardio together. We get on the stairs and just chatted up for 45 minutes while we were doing cardio. And then I invited her over to watch Patriots football game 
was like playoffs or something like that. And uh, then we finally went on our first real date and she actually made the move to kiss me first. She thought I was uh, not interested at all because I wouldn't make any moves. I'm just a gentleman, you know? I don't want to throw myself at people. And uh, I actually proposed to her here and everything, right over in the same area where we first met. I had uh, Charles Glass training us. She was one week out from her first show ever. And uh, I hired the guy from MD to do a video of us training together. And in the middle of the video, I took out this, uh, I made a, a silver um, weight clip, like you slide on the end of the barbell, but I made it to fit her finger because her engagement ring wasn't gonna be ready yet. And uh, so I proposed to her with this little weight clip. And you guys will see on Instagram, this little silver weight clip in front of a infinity uh, steering wheel. And it says, will you be my swole mate? Well, that's my picture. That's my ring that I had made. I just didn't know anything about watermarking then. Someone stole it off my Instagram and the shit went viral. So if you ever see that, that's the actual engagement ring that I proposed to my wife to here. So we didn't go with the all out douchebag path and get married here. We considered it, but we did a destination wedding in uh, Costa Rica because we never get to go on vacation anyway. So kill two birds with one stone. Last one. That, my friends, is a wrap. That's uh, right now back workout number two on the program. Like I said, I train four days on, one day off. So I hit every body part twice. But in the training program, there's two different workouts. So I do this particular workout every 10 days. And in five days, I'll do another back workout, which is a little different. I get to go grocery shopping, go home and eat, take a 45 minute nap, get my car washed, come back here. I got clients from 12 to two, massage from two to three, and then client at 3.30 and 4.30. And I get to go home and go to bed. That's all I do all day, is just figure out how early can I get to bed? No life whatsoever. Saturday night, one of my clients has been inviting me and my wife to go to a party with him all the time. He has a lot of rich friends. He's pretty well off himself out in Malibu. So we finally broke down this Saturday and went. It was his niece's 30th birthday party. And uh, so Saturday was the first time that I've been up past 8.30 in probably two months, plus, two, two months plus. Uh, I was miserable. <laughs> can't drink, can't eat the food. They had all this amazing cheese and crackers and God, they probably went through, opened up like 20 bottles of Dom. I mean, this house is just absolutely gorgeous. So, got to drive my first Rolls Royce. My client had a few too many glasses of champagne. So, he made me drive back. I'm like, uh, can we sign a little disclaimer in case anything happens? I ain't got 400 something thousand dollars to pay for this shit. So, business experience, getting out, meet different people, get out of our little bubble. Now, my wife bartends on weekends, typically, so she has no life. And uh, I'm usually up, even if I don't train early. I have clients at 6 a.m., three days a week. I usually come in and do fasted three or four days a week, and I train early, like three days a week. So, I'm up. Sleeping in for me is 4.30 in the morning, so, you know, it's a different life. But I am gonna bring you guys around the corner and show you my pride and joy this year. They put my photo up on the wall over in the uh, famous corner, over where uh, you know you see the images of Chris Cormier and Paul Dolette and Flex Wheeler posing over in that corner. 
So I'm right up on the wall next to my boy Chris. I'll walk around the corner and show you where that is. Definitely an honor to be up there with uh, you know, so many great bodybuilders, especially in this little corner. Picture's not that big, but sorry, I'd rather have the good location. So that was definitely one of my favorite accomplishments thus far is to be put up there. So it's only beginning, I hope. Just gotta keep grinding and get better. I know one day I won't ever be up there. I'm a realist. I'll never be in a Mr. Olympia. You know, I think uh, a realistic goal for me is, is to be kind of like a, a seven through 10 kind of guy. You know, if I can get in that range, you know, top 10, I think that's a hell of an achievement for me. You know, top five at a competitive Arnold, something like that. But I just know I just don't have the structure. You know, I'm narrow in the clavicles, wide in the hips. So I don't have what it takes, you know, as far as these, some of these guys that have just freaky structure. Um, so I know what I bring to the table, I'm a realist. Uh, I'm not a win at all costs kind of guy. Now when it comes to my training, my dieting, everything like that, yeah. But all the other stuff that goes into bodybuilding, um, you know, I care about my health, I care about my looks. I still want to kind of stay young looking. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm a realist with things. I know what I got, I know what I don't have. So, but most of all, I love what I do. I'm surviving, living in LA, which is one of the most expensive places to live. You know, me and my wife, we get to pursue our dreams and our passions and not worry about, you know, how the bills are gonna be paid or how we're gonna put food on the table. So, I know things can always be better, but uh, I'm definitely appreciative of what I've had, what I've created in my life and uh, what we're gonna create in the future. So, I wanna thank you for coming out this early in the morning and getting a video and uh, taking time out of your day to, to get this footage. And uh, I can't wait to see the end product.